At the moment across the UK, there is a bit of a tussle going on between cold Arctic air in the north, much milder air to the south, and in between a boundary where, over the coming days, there will be some significant and disruptive snow. Where that snow occurs, that's the key question I'll be discussing in this deep dive, but I'll also be answering the question about which of these air masses dominates the longer term this weekend and in the next few weeks. All of that still to come in this week's in-depth forecast, Met Office Deep Dive. We do these every Tuesday. If you enjoy them, don't forget to hit subscribe. And of course, feel free to answer, uh, or I'll do the answering if I can. Ask questions, send us your comments, send us your likes. And if you happen to be watching this between 4.30 p.m. and 5 p.m. on Tuesday the 6th of February, well, we're going to be premiering the video. And that means you can take part in the live chat and I'll be on hand to answer any questions live. So. We're going to be covering a lot in this week's deep dive, but first of all, let's take a look at this temperature contrast across the UK. Cold Arctic air in the north, mild air in the south, and over the next few days, that boundary between the two tends to oscillate across the UK. So that, at first, the cold air sinks south, a band of rain clears the UK overnight into the start of Wednesday, but then an area of low pressure in the Atlantic pushes a weather front back in across the UK. Initially a spell of rain coming into the south and southwest on uh, Wednesday night into Thursday morning, but as that band of rain mixes with the cold air across central parts, there's likely to be some significant and disruptive snow. More on that in a moment. We keep the cold air there in the far north. Then further ahead, that low pressure looking increasingly dominant now, and this has been a significant change in the computer model outputs over the last 24 hours. Now, if you'd been paying attention to previous weather forecasts, there was a reasonably strong signal that into the weekend, the low pressure that arrives later this week would sink away into the continent and the whole of the UK would return to colder air from the north or the east. But what now looks most likely heading into the weekend is this sort of thing. Low pressure exerting more of a div, uh, an influence across the UK, sending milder air across the country so that the cold air becomes displaced to the far north. And actually you can trace those differences in the computer modelling back to very subtle differences at the start of the forecast out in the mid-Atlantic where this low pressure is currently sitting. And we've also got the jet stream picking up that low. Now, What's happened in the last 24 hours with much of the computer modelling is that they've developed this low just a fraction more than before. And that is an important difference because that means that it can exert more of its influence from the Atlantic. It can send the rain further north across the UK, snow in places, and it can displace the cold air more firmly to the north rather than the cold air winning and pushing the low to the south. So there's been this important change in the computer modelling heading into the weekend in terms of that low that's currently sitting in the Atlantic and how much it takes over the UK's weather into the weekend and returns much of the UK to milder and in places wetter weather with the cold air displaced to the far north of Scotland. But after that, well, we've got a bit more I'd say confidence about weather patterns and how they'll evolve through next week and beyond. And I'll be covering that in a bit more later on. But let's take a look at the next few days first of all, uh, because there's plenty to talk about. And at the moment, as I mentioned, we've got this band of rain sinking south and we've already got the wintry weather into the north. So for the rest of Tuesday and overnight, we've got further snow showers coming into the north and northwest of Scotland. Ice warning in force. I'd say in parts of north and northwest Scotland, we'll see another two to five centimetres, perhaps eight centimetres over higher parts of the northwest highlands. And we have certainly seen some significant snow building up during Tuesday across Shetland. So. Scotland will stay roughly in the same kind of regime over the next few days. We can expect further snow showers coming in. This is the start of Thursday. Again, more significant snow showers building up across the north and northwest of Scotland. Nothing exceptional uh, for Scotland for the time of year. Of course, it often snows in February, but yes, could cause a few issues. But you might have noticed further south, we've got some more significant snow 
arriving by this stage. Let's rewind to the end of Wednesday. Wednesday's a fine day, bright for many, just some lingering cloud and dampness across the far south and southwest before that low that I mentioned in the mid-Atlantic pushes the spell of rain back in from the south and southwest. And it will be rain across much of the south of Wales, south of England, really Birmingham to mid Wales southwards. This is rain and it's heavy and it's persistent. Could be a few issues, although the dry weather recently will help mitigate against the worst of the impacts. But nevertheless, it's a wet start to the day across much of South Wales and Southern England as that rain moves in. Then playing it forward. And what we've got is that rain mixing with the cold air and turning increasingly to snow. And to understand why, I just want to show this. This is really interesting in terms of the contrast across the UK. And this is the freezing level, so the height of the zero degree isotherm. And what it shows is Normally, as a rule of thumb, as meteorologists, we look at two, three hundred metres for the height of the zero degree isotherm for snow to be falling at the surface. So it doesn't have to be below zero at the surface. But if it's below zero at about 200 metres, then it means that snow at 200 metres won't have time to melt. Or if it does melt, then it's going to be, well, sleety or whatever. But also the uh, cooling that you get for evaporation as that precipitation falls from the sky also helps to keep it as snow. So two, 300 metres or so, uh, shown by these grey colours, would indicate that any precipitation would be falling as snow. So for the rest of uh, Tuesday, that's really the far north of Scotland. We're into the colder air though, blues there, so some hill snow, although most places across Northern Ireland, Scotland, Northern England are turning drier as the rain clears through. But skipping forward to the end of Wednesday, and what you can see is big contrast across the UK. So Scotland, Northern England into the greys. That means snow for many precipitation falling out of the sky. For the south, it's, well, this colour, whatever it is, green. I guess that means that it's way up that zero degree isotherm, 1400 metres, it's all going to be rain. And that contrast really becomes more and more enhanced so that by the time we get to mid-morning on Thursday, let's pause it there and check this out. Let's zoom in so you can have a closer look. Here's that boundary. We've got Birmingham there, we've got the grey colours, so anything falling out of the sky would be snow, and we've got the green colours, anything falling out of the sky would be uh, rain. And all of these other colours are concentrated in a very tight gradient a few miles or so. And so really it goes from snow to rain within a few miles. And this is why forecasting snow in the UK, one of the reasons, is so tricky. This would suggest it would be rain for Birmingham, but if that boundary is further south by about 10, 20 miles or so, it would be snow. So that tight gradient across the UK, cold Arctic air, much milder subtropical air across the southern parts of the UK and we keep that really tight gradient going all the way through Thursday. And that's why, really, we can, we can say that there's going to be snow falling in many parts of Northern England, Northern Ireland, North Wales, North Midlands, Norfolk, perhaps, when that rain bumps into the cold air. But that's only if this boundary stays as it is, and there's currently some uncertainty about the exact north-south distribution of this boundary. Either way, it's a real significant contrast up and down the country. And if we go back to the weather map here, and we can see the consequences of that. Um, there we go. So let's play that forward. And what you can see is that snow coming out of the sky really just to the north of Birmingham, as I mentioned, into North Wales, Northern England, and then eventually it pushes into Northern Ireland, uh, much of Northern England, and eventually Southern Scotland as well into Thursday night and Friday as a fragmented feature. Then you'll notice another band of rain moving up during Friday. And as each sub subsequent band of rain moves up, it's bringing milder air. So this is effectively rain for many places with hill snow more likely further north. And over the hills, there will be some substantial snow uh, accumulating.
by the looks of it through Thursday, but there'll also be some patchy snow at lower levels. I just want to show you what the Met Office high-res model is showing in terms of snow depth. And let's just fast forward it there to, say, the end of Thursday. And as you can see, we've got those, uh, that build-up of snow across the north and northwest of Scotland, Highlands, Grampians, and so on. We've got the key over here on the, on the right. And what the Met Office model is suggesting by this stage is that for many higher parts of the UK, we're seeing significant snow accumulations. So we're seeing five centimetres, perhaps as much as 25 centimetres or so, parts of North Wales into the Peak District, Pennines and so on. Some of the higher parts of Northern Ireland also picked out Southern Scotland and so on. Now the Met Office model isn't showing much snow at low levels, but another model is showing some significant snow at low levels. This is the European model and this is the snow depth for Thursday and it's showing a stronger signal for low-lying snow away from coasts across Northern Ireland, Northern England, into parts of the North Midlands and North Wales. And we know that the European model tends to overdo snow depth. It tends to overdo falling snow and accumulating snow at the surface. But we reckon the truth will be somewhere in between the Met Office model, which has nothing at low levels, and the European model, which has quite a lot. And what we reckon, we've got a weather warning as well, I should mention, is that in this uh, day three, in this area, so for Northern Ireland, Northern England, North Wales, on Thursday, there's the risk of medium impacts from snow. That means this is the zone where is where there's currently thought to be the highest risk of medium level impacts from, from snow and at lower levels, a uh, centimetre or two, patchy accumulations away from coasts, at 200 metres and above, five centimetres perhaps, and at 400 metres and above, 15 to 25 centimetres. So that would be really significant snow accumulating uh, over the higher parts of North Wales and Northern England, but at lower levels, perhaps enough snow to cause some disruption for these busy parts of the UK, Manchester, Liverpool, uh, perhaps northern parts of the Midlands, uh, and also for parts of Northern Ireland. A small amount of snow in this country can cause some significant disruption. Of course, we're not so used to it as other countries. So that's why we've got this yellow warning in force for Thursday. But after Thursday, the weather stays interesting. And into Friday, as I mentioned, further spells of rain pushing up from the south. Further hill snow by this stage, with milder air making inroads from the south. Uh, the snow increasingly uh, confined to hills of northern England and into Scotland. But even by the start of the weekend, there could be some significant snow building up as these systems push north across eastern Scotland. And at lower levels, some sig significant rain building up. So here's the setup for Saturday. We've got uh, cold easterly wind for Scotland. We've got the coldest air confined to the far north, but the potential for some significant snowfall over the Grampians, above a few hundred metres or so, and some significant rain building up at lower levels for Scotland and the far north of England. Elsewhere, much milder, with showers feeding in or longer spells of rain from the west. Here's the area of low pressure. As I mentioned, previous model runs had it much further south. Now it looks most likely that it's going to be, well, dominating the UK's weather into the weekend with these systems spiralling around it. What happens after that is that the weather makes a messy transition to something a bit more blocked. Now, I just want to show you this uh, graph here. This shows the most likely weather patterns for the next couple of uh, weeks. The date is on the bottom here. And what we see for the start of next week, Monday the 12th, Tuesday the 13th, is this transition from uh, blues to reds. And what this indicates is that the most likely weather patterns will go from uh, low pressure dominated blues to high pressure dominated, which are the reds. But there are two different reds emerging for next week and into, well, the 19th, 20th of February. And they, in, they uh, are basically representing two different types of high pressure. One of them looks like this, and this is the one that's emerging as slightly more likely for next week. 
higher pressure over Scandinavia, an easterly airflow of the UK, colder than average, but with the winds more from the southeast, it may not be as cold as some easterlies can be. But obviously a return to frosty nights and it would feel cold in that easterly breeze. Atlantic systems kept at bay. Now this is, we're talking middle of next week until the end of next week. This is the most likely weather pattern. But this is also a scenario that is emerging in the computer models. Higher pressure close to the UK or perhaps just to the north. Again, blocking weather systems from the Atlantic. Again, keeping things quite chilly, but nothing at the moment signalled to be desperately cold. And that, again, would keep things drier than average. It would be uh, frosty by night, uh, but quite bright and mostly dry by day. Having said that, there's always the possibility that the Atlantic weather will try and return at some point. And depending on the dynamics of all of that, could lead to some additional moisture and, and on top of the cold weather in place and further wintry hazards. But of course, we'll keep you updated on all of that right here at the Met Office. That's enough from me for now. I hope you've enjoyed it and let me know what you think. Let me know if you've got any questions, any ideas for future deep dives. Let us know in the comments. But that's all from me for now. Bye bye.